Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is a very interesting one. It is the diet reset, which is an emergency action to try to eliminate high diet fatigue. Let's get into it. If you are doing chronic attempts at fat loss dieting, which a lot of us have been down that road, that means repeated fat loss diets, too short or no maintenance phases whatsoever, always chasing the scale, always trying to get leaner and smaller, that can lead to some really, really bad stuff. It can lead to a crazy high amount of diet fatigue. You're miserable all the time. We'll actually get into what specific symptoms we're looking for. It can leave you with a very, very poor diet psychology. You do not relate to your diet in a way that is either two things, enjoyable to yourself or remotely even tolerable, nor is it productive. Because if something is not enjoyable or tolerable, like contest prep for getting lean, at the very least, it's productive. You actually get shredded. Hopefully, your contest prep is less than intolerable or borderline tolerable, but ideally, you get one for the other, right? So if both of those things are true, you're in a really, really bad way. And some of these symptoms can sort of border on disordered eating. What are the symptoms? If you are chronically overdieted, how do you know? Well, first, you have constant cravings. If you're honest with yourself all the time, you see cookies on a commercial and you're just like, oh my God, I could eat an infinite number of those. If pretty much all tasty foods, you theoretically look at them on commercials and stuff or other people eating them, and you think to yourself, I don't have a fill point on that food, that can be okay at the end of a diet, but if it's something that's with you for months and months and months, bad deal. Next, you get really guilty feelings about eating any foods or foods that are off plan, especially foods that are tasty or cheat foods. And generally, just at any time you eat food, you're like, man, if I could just not eat this, I would get skinnier. And so you feel guilty about eating food. Bad deal. You are really tempted to binge relatively often. You go into your fridge and you take out your clean meals that you have. And, you know, maybe like your girlfriend's jar of peanut butter is there because she's not dieting. And you look at it and you're like, I could just fucking eat this whole thing right now. And no one would have to know. I would just replace it. And that would be it, right? And some of these are just temptations. Sometimes they turn into behaviors. So if you're binging, bad deal. If you do eat the peanut butter, bad deal. Not because you're, oh no, you're off your diet. Shit happens. You know, we live, live a long time. Dieting is only for a short term. No big deal. You don't have to be perfect. But if you're binging and it's causing you a ton of emotional distress, that's really the problem. There with these things over time can be a growing desire to just give it all up. But you've had so much control over your diet and so much hardship from trying to get skinnier and skinnier that you are just sort of on any bad time of the day, if I catch you at your worst, you're ready to just say, fuck it. Like it's like 3 p.m. and you have to eat your clean meal and you're starving and you look and there's some food that you really want to eat or someone's eating French fries in front of you and you're like this close to just being like, I don't care. I don't care anymore. I just want to eat and relax. I can't, I'm tired of controlling my food behaviors. A lot of this comes with a high negative body image. And as a matter of fact, if you don't have a negative image of yourself as far as what your body looks like, at least to you, we'd be really curious that you would do any of this at all. You know, if someone's like, hey, Dr. Mike, are you studying computer programming? I'm like, no. And they're like, well, aren't you, don't you feel bad about how little computer programming you know? I'd be like, no. Aren't you upset that you're such a bad computer programmer? No, I don't give a fuck. Like, that's not my job. I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. I'm really bad at astrology. I don't know anything about that either. But if someone says, hey, like, you're dieting all the time to try to lose fat and get skinny, right? Someone's like, yes. Uh, do you like your body? Sometimes people say yes, and then they don't qualify for chronic fat loss dieting problem because they're actually in a really good space. A lot of the times, they're really trying to change something. It means they don't like the way it is. And they may say, oh, yeah, I like my body plenty fine, but inside their heart of hearts, they don't feel like that. And if you don't feel like that, if you have a really high negative body image along with a few of these other things, you could just be really not having a good time. And the answer to that, reversing that good time is not continuing to try to lose body fat. In addition, of course, you get the classic symptoms of over dieting, which is super low energy, super low cognitive function, strength loss. Right now, I'm recording this one day out of my carb up for my bodybuilding show, Masters USA's. And uh, as you can tell, I'm pretty fluid, right? I'm tired. I'm crazy. I'm fatigued. My brain doesn't work as great uh, as it uh, usually does when I'm properly fed. But like, uh, you know, nothing to write home about. This chronic fat loss dieting is like people can tell.
you can tell. You're really, really off your game. And if that's the case, it's a bad deal. Now, here's the thing. We have a really solid weapon against chronic diet fatigue. At the end of a fat loss diet, unless you do a massing phase, which really heals almost all diet fatigue, you may plan to lose more weight later. And so you would do a fat loss diet, get really fatigued at this tail end, and you would do a maintenance phase to erase the fatigue. And it can usually solve most diet fatigue problems, but not all. For some extreme cases of diet fatigue, the very simple act of counting and tracking on a maintenance phase, because a maintenance phase means you get more food, sometimes a lot more food, and over time, weeks and weeks, your diet fatigue really, really reduces, you just don't go off the rails. And not going off the rails means you still have to count, you still have to track. If that tracking and counting is such a psychological burden to you, it's almost like PTSD, it stands for and literally is restriction. And if you just can't stand that boot on your face anymore, then the maintenance phase is unlikely to solve that. So if you go through multiple weeks of maintenance, you feel a little bit better, but the very act of logging and tracking, you just want to be like, I just want to eat whatever the fuck I want. I can't do this anymore. You may be a candidate for something like a diet reset, which is one step above in seriousness and in effect from a maintenance phase. Another thing as to why the maintenance phase might not work. If you're really in a bad way like this psychologically, the very idea that the maintenance phase is going to end and it's just prep for your next diet can be really, really psychologically taxing. Here's an analogy. If you're unreal burnt out from school, like burnt out, burnt out, how much does summer vacation help in alleviating that? Well, it can help some, but the very time-limited nature of it may not fundamentally at the core eliminate all of the burnout from school because it's June and then it's July and then it's August and you're at the, what what do regular people do in summer breaks from school? Let's see. I just spent them uh, studying mostly. Uh, You know, you go to like the gorge or whatever where the fucking people are in bikinis and they dive into the fucking deep blue water and they have their flirtation, blah, 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 you know, 80s movies type shit. And you're there and it's August 5th and you're having a great time. And then someone like mentions school, like, oh yeah, I won't go back to school. And you're like, fuck, that's right. There's only 20 days till school starts. God damn it. And then tomorrow it's 19, then 18, then 17. It's like a countdown. The fact that there is this hard deadline as to when the fun stops may itself be poisoning your ability to heal and really like school again. And just the same way, if the maintenance phase is three months long, Month one, you may be doing okay, but there's a shitload of fatigue to bring down. So your diet fatigue is doing this. And then month two, your diet fatigue really gets at it. Month three, your diet fatigue might start to rise a little bit psychologically because you know it's just X number of days, X number of cheat meals, X number of minutes and seconds until you have to be back into the suck because you know you're going back into the suck. So true healing may not be possible if you're in that bad of a state. At this point, It is my recommendation, and and all of us at RP that write the books, that you try the diet reset or a diet reset RP style, which we'll describe to you what it is. If you want more information on this, we have uh, descriptions in the Renaissance Diet 2.0 and the book Renaissance Woman that we wrote some time back. Still still super, super pertinent. The diet reset is a four-step, fundamentally, you can count four or five steps depending on how you count it, four-step process. And it is designed to heal pretty much all diet fatigue. It doesn't always work, but it works way better than a maintenance phase, and it works way better than continuing to try to do fat loss diets when you're so much psychological pain. It is not for everyone. Not everyone will be able to pull it off. Not everybody needs it. And it should really only be used in the most dire situations because if you are interested in short-term results, it won't get you them. It actually reverses some of your progress. Some, definitely not all. But if you're in such a bad way that you can't even stand the idea of dieting anymore, but you theoretically know that eventually you want to care about how your body looks, the diet reset may be the thing that really saves you. And if it doesn't work, it is very likely that you're on that disordered eating spectrum really close to being diagnosed with a formal eating disorder or past that threshold. And then our recommendation is you speak with a psychological professional as soon as possible, as soon as you find out that this is the case, and that's totally okay. We all need a bit of help sometimes, some of us more than others. I've certainly been to a psychologist, not for diet stuff, but for other stuff. I had attention deficit disorder as a kid. I had to go to a child psychologist, blah, blah, blah. It's no big deal. It's 2021 or whatever, 2022. Um, We need help. We get it, right? But if you're not quite sure if it's that serious yet, but you're really, really over the dieting process, 
Let's chat about what the diet reset looks like, give you some tips, see if maybe you can try it and maybe help yourself out. All right. So four phases. First phase is what we call, and you can turn these anything you want, we called it unattached eating. This is a trippy phase. This is the phase of the diet reset that when you tell someone about, it brings the most psychological discordance in them. They're like, wait, what? You want me to do what? The other phases make a bit more sense to someone who's dieted for a long time. But this phase is also the most necessary. It is the most critical. You cannot skip this phase because it does much of the resetting and the rest of the phases just onboard you back into normal diet relationship. So it's a big reset and then back to normal. So unattached eating. The goal here in this phase is to eat freely with zero concern over food choices whatsoever. You heard me correctly. The purpose of this phase, which you could begin tomorrow if you so choose and rationally decide, is you literally just eat whatever the fuck you want, whenever you want, how much ever of it you want. It sounds crazy and it sounds like a recipe for hyperobesity, but the interesting here, interesting thing here is this. Most people that become obese, they don't actually have disordered eating. They just fucking like eating food and they don't give a fuck, which is totally cool. No value judgment. People that are struggling with diet, a lot of times what they're struggling with isn't the technical hardship of the diet. It's not the low calories that they're struggling with. It's the psychological burden of restriction. For a lot of these people, as soon as the restriction is lifted, they go ham. And for days and maybe even weeks, they eat a ton. But after a while, the fact that there's no restriction and there's no restriction coming, there's nothing on the horizon saying, well, you're going to have to stop this sooner or later. A lot of people that are really burdened by dieting, they kind of not really interested in eating as much as possible anymore. The hunger is normal. And they're like, I, I don't know. Someone's like, hey, do you want Taco Bell again for the fifth time today? And they're like, not really. And they're like, oh, you're just saying that because you don't want to put on weight. Like, no, I actually don't fucking want it. Believe it or not, not wanting Taco Bell is this crazy thing I can't relate to because I'm one day away from my carb up for the show. I'm fucking starving. But it's a thing. Like, once you get your fill, you just, meh, you just don't kind of want it anymore. If you've ever been on a hardcore diet or really been diet fatigued, you watch like movies and like the actors are eating food and they'll like chew like one bite of a slice of pizza and then they'll talk to someone for 15 minutes and they'll like eat another bite. And you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? There's 10 pieces of pizza on the table. Eat the fucking shit as fast as you can. It's, eh. And it's hard to relate. But in reality, when you're not psychologically really fucked up from dieting, like pizza's cool and all, but like it's fucking pizza. And sometimes when you're not hungry, you have a piece and you're like, I don't, I don't know. I really want any pizza, right? People, people deny pizza for all sorts of reasons, mostly because they don't want it. Not just, oh, I shouldn't be having this amount of diet. And if you can't relate to that, you may be a candidate for having a lot of diet fatigue. So the purpose of this phase, so th the thing we're doing is just saying no more rules, just fucking go. The purpose is to ease the psychological burden of dieting and restriction and greatly reduce the negative relationships and habits that you associate with food. The typical duration of this phase, as we have seen in folks we've worked with, is like two to four months. But here's the thing. The phase is complete when you, not theoretical you, you actually you who's trying this, can honestly look forward to cleaning up your diet again. You guys have been there before. I know you have. Where like, you know, you finish a diet and you go, or even if you were not on a diet, and you go with friends to like, you hang out over the course of like Christmas or New Year's. You hang out with friends and you party. And it's just junk food the entire time. And like January 2nd, you guys are sitting there and there's like Cheetos everywhere. And you're like, do you guys want to go get a fucking salad? And everyone's like, yes, fuck yes, vegetables, please. Like at some point, your body doesn't feel like eating shit anymore. You actually really don't feel like it. Not like, oh, well, I should, I should eat a salad. It's not, it's not a, a notion like should. It doesn't come from the, you know, the executive part of your brain. It comes from deep down within of instinctual. Like you just don't, you just don't want to eat a bunch of shit anymore. And you can honestly look forward to cleaning up your diet again because clean eating, not from the perspective of this is what you should be doing, this is going to get you in shape, but from the perspective of like when I eat a, a meal of like salmon and brown rice and veggies and a few fruit, I feel fucking good. Like actually feel, not morally feel, physiologically feel. It fucking feels good to eat clean and healthy. Like you guys ever seen people like hang out with people like you maybe not in a diet fatigue state, you're eating healthy all the time and you love it. You ever see people who just eat like random shit all the time, you hang out with them for a few days and you're like, how the fuck does your body work? Like I would just like, you, you guys ever like eat one too many cheat meals and like you feel the oil coming out of like fucking sweating out of your armpits and you're like, ugh. Here's a great way to do this. Go rewatch old Sopranos episodes and figure out like just, just track what Tony's eating. At some point after episode number five, if you're like on a mass phase or something, he's like, oh, gabagool. And he eats like another like thing of ice cream. And you're like, fuck, Tony, <laughs> how can you feel good about this? If you actually start feeling like that, then you're ready for the next phase. Until and unless 
you don't feel like that, eat whatever you want. The downside, you're probably going to gain some weight and some fat. The upside is for most people, eventually this will set you on a plan to heal your diet fatigue. And within a few months of dieting, you'll lose all that fat and extra weight. I mean, how much weight can you really gain? The answer is for most people, not nearly as much as they think. We all think at the end of a diet, like, bro, I'm gonna put on 50 fucking pounds. I'm gonna eat everything. Two weeks later, you're like, I don't know, man. I don't really feel like eating shit anymore. Maybe a little bit of shit, but I just wanna clean it up. Two to four months later, most people, they're interested in starting to eat healthy again because that's where you came from originally right? So maybe you'll come back. So when you can honestly look forward to cleaning up your diet again, phase two can begin, can begin if it's up to you. Phase two, we titled it nutritious choices. Here, you begin to eat with no calorie or nutrient requirements. You don't give a fuck about protein, portion sizes, meals, nothing. But you generally build most of your meals around a basis of healthy food. Like, this is this thing where, like, you're not on a diet plan and you walk into a gas station because you're on a road trip, let's say. When you're in this phase, you would be like, all right, let's see if they have any, like, fruits and some protein bars and some beef jerky and some Diet Coke. Like, shit that gets in my body and fucking makes me feel good. Maybe a handful of nuts or something like that. Versus you get into a fucking, you know, some just raggedy gas station somewhere and you see, like, the mystery meat turning on the fucking lamp heater thing. And you're like that. I want that. And like, if you really want that, hey, go for it. Right. But at some point you don't really want that shit most of the time, not all the time, most of the time. So you eat minimally processed foods that are high in protein and fiber and vitamins and minerals. The purpose of this phase is now that you really have all that bullshit junk eating out of your system, like the thing you wanted, you got and you got full, you're done with it was super stuffing yourself. And now you just want to reestablish healthy habits without the pressures of counting and tracking because it can be a lot to do that diet reset phase one of just like eating whatever and then go right back into a hardcore diet. Do not do that. Ease in. And the easing in is you still don't care how much food you eat. You're just making like healthy choices. And not all of them, like most of the choices are healthy. And that is going to actually drop a whole bunch of body fat for you right away because as you guys know, when you start eating healthier, you cannot maintain an unreal number of calories on healthy food. It's just not possible. And this phase typically lasts for two or three months and it is only over and you only move on to the next phase when you no longer have any fears or doubts about gently controlling your food intake, right? Because you kind of miss the times when you used to have like meals and knew how much food you were going to have and have some goals. And if someone's like, hey, what do you think about like like having like four to six meals structured per day? And you're like, please, fucking please. I need structure. I'm tired of just eating like a fucking goat, like eat whatever the fuck at all times, right? So when you really feel like, hey, no fears or doubts, you can get into phase number three, which we call rough macros. In this phase, you're still eating nutritious foods. You're still having a little bullshit when you want it. No big deal. And you add in the goal of getting very rough via like eyeballing or fistfuls or handfuls or finger portions. You just eyeball intakes of protein, veggies, and healthy carbs with each meal. You have like a certain number of meals, three to five meals per day. It can be flexible. And you're like, every time I eat, I'm going to have some fistful of protein and some veggies and some either fruits or grains and a bit of healthy fats. And like, if I don't meet that exactly, no big deal. But like, I'm kind of trying a little bit. What that does is it gets you back into the habit of eating well-rounded meals and some semblance of structure. Notice where this is trending to, right? It's trending to a point where it's starting to look less and less different from the formal dieting that you were so running away from before and with good reason, right? So now, not only have we gotten our fill of bullshit, and we still eat some bullshit every now and again, not only did we switch to mostly healthy foods, but now our healthy foods are kind of a little bit more, not regimented, but like pre-planned and programmed. And we're saying, okay, we're trying to make a plate every time we eat, we're trying to make a plate that looks reasonable, that looks like something you would eat on a controlled diet. Typically lasts one to three months. And if it's more, no big deal. And if it's less, don't lie to yourself. It should actually be less. You should really feel like this before you transition. Feel like what? The phase is complete and you can go on to the last phase, phase four, when you're making sure to get the roughly amount of correct protein, veggies, and healthy carbs in each meal with no stress out of sheer habit. Like if you show up to Chipotle and you go, okay, I want boom, boom, this, this, that. And someone's like, what about like queso and double guac and dip the fucking burrito in oil twice and refry it? You just ask them to do it custom for you. You're like, oh, like, that didn't occur to me. They're like, wait. So you're doing this just because you're doing it? You're like, yeah, this is how I eat, right? A lot of times, like, 
if bodybuilders especially and folks that are in control of their fitness, when they go out to eat, they'll just order like healthy shit just kind of by default. Perfect example. Chipotle wasn't a great example because you can only order so much. Subway. Okay. Now you can go to Subway and get like the fucking new – fucking meatball sub with a bunch of fucking shit poured on it and it looks like a pizza, but it's really a sub. You can get that and it's totally cool if you do. But if in this phase you walk in and you're like, yeah, double turkey, a bunch of veggies, some of the cheese and a little bit of ranch dressing and I'm good. And someone next to you standing there, they don't know you and they see maybe you're like jacked or whatever. And they're like, man, you're like, you're on a pretty strict diet. Like if I were you, I'd get this other thing. And you're like, oh, huh. Yeah, it just didn't even occur to me. You know, like how many people go to Subway and like the first notion is to get cookies? Like, I don't know. Subway cookies are fine. But like if your first idea is like, yeah, I just want like my food. And someone's like, well, that's pretty clean. You're like, I didn't think of it as clean. It's just like what I do. And they're like, well, you seem to have – you asked for double turkey, so you're interested in protein. You're like, yeah, it's just habit to me. And if you're thinking about it like, oh, I have to order this. I'd love a cookie, but I shouldn't have one. You're not ready. You're not ready for the next phase. Keep doing this one. Or go back a phase. That's totally fine too. But if you're legit, 100% like, man, this is just what I want, hey, then you're almost there. And what does almost there mean? Well, the last phase is counting and measuring. Okay, And the goal here is to begin counting macronutrients either daily or in each meal. And that's when you start counting. So you're like, okay, I'm going to Subway and I've got my nutrient tracker out, an RP diet app, and I type it in and boom, there it goes. Right? The purpose of this phase is a really, really big deal. Notice this phase is not an intentional fat loss phase. It's maintenance. It's just counting. It's not even like you're not even trying to maintain. You're not even looking at the scale yet. You're just counting macros of the healthy meals you're already eating, of the mostly healthy already, mostly healthy foods you already learned to eat in phase two. And after you got over all your bullshit, I want to eat pizza every meal of the day in phase one. So the purpose of this phase is to get used to the idea of processing – or sorry, used to the idea of, of – and process of counting your intake without yet having a goal number to hit. It's a very different thing to count macros and like literally not give a shit what they come out to versus count macros to try to align it into a restrictive diet and burn yourself the fuck out. Typically, one to three months later – People are really used to this. And then to them, counting macros and looking at food again is it's like second nature again. And someone's like, man, aren't you really burned out from dieting? And you're like, I was like a year ago, but honestly, I can fucking do with a diet right now. And they're like, oh my God, dieting restriction. You're like, man, it doesn't feel like restriction to me. It feels like I'm just goal-oriented and a plan. I'm going to do a three-month diet and it's going to get a little tough at the end and I'll be fine. I'll just go back to maintenance. And if you can honestly tell yourself and feel like that about it, hey, you're pretty fucking recovered. And this shit works in real life, right? Again, if it doesn't work, you need professional help. It doesn't work for everyone, but it works for most. When are you done with this phase? When you're in the painless habit of counting macros and or calories, either per day or per meal, with most of your food, not all, being nutritious and balanced. And when counting macros is really that easy, the next thing you can do if you want to diet is just give yourself a macro goal or a meat per meal macro goal, use the RP Diet app or something like that, and then you go and execute your first diet. And here's the thing. If it works, you'll be able to do your next diet and do it normally without crazy, crazy diet fatigue and psychosis, but you may choose not to. You may be fucking training this whole time and highly recommend you train this entire time unless you're burnt out of training too, but very few people get burnt out of training. And, you know, if you're just training the whole time and you're in great shape, you don't have to fucking diet. And you just think, you actually never have to diet. It's always a choice. And another cool insight tidbit, especially if you younger folks tuning in this channel, nobody gives a flying fuck about how you look except for you. At the end of the day, people just care about themselves. So if you think, oh, oh my God, people will judge me. Yeah, sh sure. Some insane people will judge you. Most people just don't care. So if you want to do a diet, hey, great, do it away and you may be very well ready. But if you don't, like the purpose of, of this isn't like a launch sequence for a rocket. Like the rocket has to go. The diet has to start after. The purpose is to get rid of your nasty relationship with food, and at the end of which you can just maintain or live in a healthy balance the rest of your life. But if you want to do a diet, you can, and you'll be able to. And if you don't, no big deal. For many people, at the end of this four-step process, your diet fatigue will be very low or basically zero to where someone's like, you diet fatigued? You're like, what? I mean, you could actually have negative diet fatigue to where you actually, in your heart of hearts, Fucking pray to God the diet starts soon because you can't stand eating fucking pizza anymore. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, Dr. James Hoffman, uh, who we do the, the bi-weekly questions with, 
I've seen him do a mass phase where like I watched him do, I physically went to him, went with him. I was dieting at the time. So I was like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. He went to Little Caesars to get the $5 hot and ready. He made it like 90% through the pizza and he just looked at the last two slices and he's like, I can't do this. Like oil coming out of his body. He's negative diet fatigue. Like when he started his fat loss diet for the first eight weeks, he was like, this is incredible. I feel better. <laughs> Actually want to do this, right? So very low diet fatigue as a result, sometimes negative or, or uh, oftentimes zero. And especially psychologically. Through this process, physiologically, you'll probably be very well reset. No big deal. The fizz stuff though, it's not a huge deal because a lot of times you can just lower the calories up the activity and it overrides the fizz stuff. The psychology is really the big problem. And this is what this is designed to address. Two big tips before I let you guys go. Well, you can go anytime. I'm used to fucking being a professor and saying, all right, get the fuck out of here. Sorry. First, if you think, if you highly suspect you need the diet reset, you probably do. Give it a shot. Number two, do not rush the phases. Everyone who starts the diet reset, 90% of the people that start it, they're like, okay, I'm going to go off plan, but only for two weeks. You are violating the spirit and letter of the diet reset. The first phase, like all the phases, is unlimited. The reason I gave you those timelines is just averages. So you don't think you're a crazy person when it takes you four months to get through the shit. That's the deal. So if you want to rush the phases, you might as well not do the shit because it's not going to work. You transition phases only when you meet the criteria. You only start eating healthy foods when you actually feel like eating healthy food. And if you never feel like eating healthy foods and you just eat junk the rest of your life, at least you're not psychologically burdened through fucking just terror all the time and thinking you need to be skinny or need to restrict yourself because living in a chronic state of guilt and fear of food, man, fuck that. Fuck that. No way to live. I'd rather eat fucking junk food and end up my 600 pound life. And by the way, unless you're genetically unbelievably predisposed to weight gain, you're never going to gain a shitload of weight. Everybody, every 140 pound girl thinks like, oh my God, if I just ate whatever I wanted, I'd be fucking enormous. Bitch, no, you wouldn't. You'd weigh 155 in three months and you'd be like, I can't eat anymore. I can't have that. Right? We all think we're going to be a sumo wrestler. That shit takes dedication. Back in my natty days, I got up to 270 with like 30% body fat, drug-free, super strong, lots of muscle, 270 pounds, tons of fat. She was fucking miserable. I mean, it took, I remember eating Pop-Tarts on purpose to boost my calories with like whole milk. And I was like, somebody fucking kill me. It's not fun. You're not, almost certainly not going to balloon up to some crazy amount. And, and here's the thing. There is a small chance you will. But if that was going to be you, you need to go speak to a medical professional psychologist and get advanced obesity drugs because you don't want to go down that road anyway. And if you can't help yourself psychologically, you need more help than that. Folks, take care of yourselves out there. Self-care is super important. Whole fucking sports, whole channel is about self-care. And if you're watching this, you probably give a shit about yourself. Not just take care of yourself out there. Take care of yourself in here because that's where it's really important. Peace.